Cute, huh? Come on, I'll show you. Okay, welcome back to the boat shop. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. Mounting the strut. By the way, do you get this yet? Contact uh, Brent Byers. Hit me up, I'll send you his contact information. Tell him you want the entire driveline assembly that Scott is putting in the M5 Performance Eliminatorius Maximus. And he'll send you this along with a bunch of other awesome parts. So we're gonna use that. Uh, here we are going to use, against all my sensibilities, we are going to use this Speedmaster rudder. Can you see that? Uh, most of it, not all of it. This you can get through Rattlesnake RC. Contact Bill, tell him you need what Scott uses. Also this, you're just gonna buy at the hardware store. This is quarter by quarter, quarter? No, half. Half by half aluminum angle with some holes in it. Mm-hmm. Five holes evenly spaced. You can do it. I'm not gonna show you that. Maybe I will. Let's talk about the rudder first, and then we'll get to the rest of it. Normally, typically, usually, because I'm weird like this, I will take a piece of 7075 aluminum and I fabricate my own mount and I use a bearing block off of a, not a bearing block, the, uh, uh, yeah, is that the bearing block or is this the bearing block? This is the bearing block because it has bearings in it. I use the bearing block off of a 21 size rudder. I know, bear with me, don't worry, we're gonna use this. Uh, and then I modify the uh, rudder horn to fit it and I put it all together like this. Why? Because this is crazy heavy. It is overkill. Look at this. Come on, let's take it over here. Here's those cute little screws. You're gonna need something like this. You decide, get whatever you want. I'll show you in a minute. First of all, good golly. <laughs> We're gonna shorten the heck out of this. We'll do that later. Okay, here we go. Man alive. Look at that. What is that? Qu quarter inch or more? Wow, that is heavy, heavy stuff. Look at that compared to what I just showed you. I don't know. I hold that in my hand, I just hate it. However, for your benefit, for your benefit alone, I'm going to use this stuff which I normally wouldn't use, only because it's just so heavy. I like building the other stuff. It's lighter, it's smaller, it looks more appropriate on the boat. Here's all the stainless hardware they give you. Are we gonna use it? No, no, we're not gonna use that. Well, you're, okay, you're probably gonna use it. I'm not. We'll talk about that in a minute too. Okay, also want you to get, I think you can probably buy all these pieces separately um, to avoid you know, duplication because we're not actually going to use this bearing block. In fact, I think you can just order this assembly with this bearing block. I didn't because I wasn't thinking ahead. So I also got this bearing block. I'm sorry, I did not keep the number for this. Uh, talk to Bill at Rattlesnake RC. He'll hook you up with it. I think they call it a one and five eighths bearing block where this is a one and a quarter or one and a half or something. Anyway, it's a little bit deeper, uh, longer. Reasons for that, I gotta try not to roll onto Jackson Brown here. Uh, re reasons for that is we're trying, we're gonna get the rudder back, not necessarily way back beyond here. I'm not a believer in the, in the you know, the six inch uh, rudder setback. I think we do wanna be close to the prop, but I'll show you why this all makes sense in a minute. If we use this one. Oh, by the way, make sure you get whatever they're gonna call it. Let's see if this was over the other way. The left hand um, mount, because we are going opposite. I, I don't know if the GoPro is pointing at this. Anyway, our turn fins over that way. So we're gonna put our rudder over this way. I know there's some, there's some schools of thought that say that the rudder should be on the same side as the turn fin. Um, I'm, I'm not a believer, though I really don't think it makes a whole heck of a lot of difference. I like the feeling of leverage that I get by moving the rudder over. 
I, I believe it'll turn in quicker into the turn, um, right or wrong. Old school boats, way back in the day, they tried to line them up. You know what I mean? They'd get the rudder way over in line with the turn fin, just thinking that that made sense. Every modern full-size hydroplane now has the rudder on the opposite side from the turn fin. Why? Is it all monkey see, monkey do? Or did somebody convert their boat at some point in time and it worked awesome and they said, why wasn't I doing that all along? Anyway, we're mounting ours on the opposite side. Now, if we mount here, we can't turn very far to the left. Now you say, well, I don't want to turn to the left. Well, me neither, but you have to sometimes. Um, so you can scoot it way over and give yourself some room. You can cut this at an angle here to buy yourself a little bit more room. I did that on my first eliminator. Uh, we're going to use our one and five eighths. Is it actually one and five eighths or am I just making that up? I don't really know where that measurement is from. Um, should be center line, right? Well, that don't make no sense. Maybe it's a one and a half. Anyway, it, it's obvious. It's the only one that has like this, this little three eighths cut slot there. Okay. So you'll see it. Talk to Bill. He'll figure it out. Okay. So anyway, we're going to use this to set our rudder back a little bit further. That'll allow us to put, put it where we want it. Okay. So that's going to be our rudder and we'll get to that. Just, I was just showing you this now so you can order this stuff up. Okay. We're not mounting that today. M maybe. I, I don't know. Depends on how much you guys slow me up while I try to explain all of this crap. Let me set this back over here. Why do we have these little brass screws? I wish they were black because on the real boat they were black. Oh, we talked about these, right? I use aluminum screws. You can buy a bunch of aluminum screws. Just look at the sizes here and copy them in aluminum. It is all you need. It'll hold this thing. I've done it for years. I do it on my gasser. My former gasser. Holds it just fine. I hear it. Hang on. I gotta check the wheels. Make sure we don't awaken the Kraken. All right. Set you aside. This guy. The real full-size boat had a trim plate here. We are replicating that. On the full-size boat, I would say it looks like it's probably six by six aluminum. I'm gonna just say it was four by four, four divided by eight, and you know, four inch divided by eight, right? Half inch. It'd be three quarter inch if, if it was truly six by six. Um, and, and I'm just not sure. And so I don't wanna over, over guess and uh, make the inspector mad when he sees it and says, uh, you, you shouldn't have one that big. Uh, no, this is well within scale. Uh, and it was about that wide. This is, uh, did I go three and a half? Yeah, three and a half inches is what looked right based on the pictures. The real boat had five mounting screws. We're going to use five mounting screws and we're going to glue these in and glue this on all at the same time. Right? When we're ready to assemble this, we're gluing this baby on there to make sure it stays. These are kind of for show, but also they're, they're going to help. They're going to help hold it. Okay? That's what we're doing here. The real boat had, uh, ahead of its time, it had a bracket arrangement style strut. They, they did it to get the prop back past this. Obviously we're not doing that, but we will mount this as far back as it can go. And it's still probably not as far back as it really should be. Well, maybe so. You, you can imagine the, the dog here and then, then the prop. That, that should be pretty doggone close to scale. So we're gonna mount this guy back here, bearing in mind that we do have one quarter inch of transom. So we can only go yay far. Yay, it's a technical term. Try to keep up. Where's the bracket? Let me tell you. Woo, doggies, this is too tall. <laughs> we have a 0% chance of fitting this underneath the back of this boat. What are they thinking? Or did I just order the wrong one? We're going to wind up cutting this off and we'll drill a new hole. Actually, I got this from Brent. And this must just be what he ships. And 
even still, this is coming, and you guys are just gonna hate me for all this stuff. You remember we made a super low ride height here of three quarters inch. So we want the center line of our drive dog shaft to be at three quarter inch depth. Three quarter inch, I'm gonna guess here, maybe you'll be able to see it, it's the number 24 on here. I'm gonna kinda of guess the center line of this strut for poops and gales, right about there. Do you see the problem? This taper is cut well above that. They expect you to run a really deep strut because that's what everybody bit, did back in the day. Speedmaster still builds their stuff that way. So we have this massive cutout that is going to, imagine this is our rear floor here. We're going to sink this strut in well beyond that. And we're going to introduce a heck of a lot of water into the boat through that. So we're going to fill this. We'll do that later. Just warming you up to the idea now so you don't start yelling later when we actually have to do it. JB weld, that's all. Get some JB weld. We're going to fill this with JB weld. It works out just fine. And then you're going to sand it and it'll look like it was made that way, but not really. Okay, so... This guy is more or less going to be banged back against that quarter inch worth of transom that we have. We're going to mark that here in just a minute. And then we'll cut our slot. And that we will do today. Great fun. All right, order your parts. Order this stuff. You're going to need it. Let me see what's next. Oh, let's mark it. Oh, why the blue tape? First of all, I don't want to get fingerprints all over the wood because remember, the bottom of this boat doesn't get painted. Why am I crazy about that right now? Because I had a Sharpie in my hand the other day and I was moving the boat around and I Sharpied it here and I Sharpied it here. Oh, I was hurt. I mean, I was seriously hurt. So use blue tape, put a piece up here. You'll see. Let me put this back where it belongs. You noticed I stood it on its end, never lay it on its side. You'll pick up all kinds of debris in it. If you're gonna use it for painting, that debris will show up in your lines. Ooh, painter's tip. I'm not a painter, but I play one on TV. Okay, that's an old joke. So we gotta make sure that we're at least a quarter inch up ahead here, right? So let's just go ahead and draw ourselves a line at one quarter inch. That would be 8.30 seconds. This is overkill. We could just mark it right in the one spot, but... That's how I roll. Okay. Now where are we going to put it? I wish I hadn't left that much material. We're going to do some measuring here on the ends. There's a... I still, someday I'm going to order a new one. I just hate this one so bad. The numbers are on the wrong side. You notice that? I want to count left to right, but I want the numbers up on this edge because I always line things up this way. So I want one, two, three, four, but they're down here. So if I turn it over, then I got to measure right to left, or count right to left, and that screws me up. And it's that way on either side, even on the back. Golly, what were they? Anyway, um, so right, we have a nine and three quarter inches wide boat, which means halfway is what? Let's see, four and a half would be nine. And uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six eighths so four and a half plus three eighths would be one two three four and seven eighths would be our middle four and seven eighths are you convinced me neither so always double check unless you are just so supremely confident four and seven eighths yes that is our middle now what we're moving it over we're moving the strut away from the turn fin. Why are we doing that? For the same reason we're moving our rudder over is we're getting leverage on that turn fin. 
I'm actually showing it this way. <laughs> Prop here, turn fin here. We want to turn in hard. I'm getting more degree of separation, whatever you want to call it, to rotate it. Yeah, now it would be really cool to go way over here and really thrust that boat into the turn. The problem with that is when the boat's riding, you're, you know, walking on the water, you're also lifting the prop up out of the water. That's no good. But we are going to buy us a little bit of angle by bringing it over this way. How much, you say? One quarter inch. If this is your center line, center line, we're moving over one quarter inch. The center of my strut now lands here. It's not much, but it's a thing, right? How wide is it? You'd think they would make it one eighth inch, you know, that'd be really, really convenient. Nope, it's slightly more. It is 530 seconds. I can, I can merely lay it here and mark it. And is it straight? I don't know. <laughs> let's uh, let's set it here, and I'm just doing nothing more than centering it up on that quarter inch to left of center mark that I made, and I'm going to mark each side. That's where my actual slot's going to be. From the side of the hull. Ah, oh, I don't know if you can see it. In the interest of uh, just kind of telling you where these things are, it's at four and five eighths is the center of the strut. I'm going to move it forward a little bit. I know you can't see it. Four and sixteen thirty seconds is one side of the slot. Four and twenty-three thirty seconds is the other. If we go up here and we mark those spots and use a straight edge, we're going to get our strut perfectly square in the boat. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> and this is not for the faint of heart, okay? Because it makes a boat a little bit twitchy to adjust. We are going to predispose the strut into the fin for all those same reasons. I, I can make this boat go straight down the straightaway, no problem. I think I could turn the strut really sharply and the boat isn't really going to know the difference that much because it's just up in the air and tapping and going. But what it will do is it will shove the boat into that fin. Again, making that arc. Um, I keep pointing this side only because it's upside down, but you know what I mean. We actually make right hand turns. We are going to thrust this boat into the turns. It'll turn in like you wouldn't believe and should rip around the turn. We're not going as much as we did here. Remember we went one quarter over here. So now this is actually sitting one quarter over from the true center line of the boat. We're going to take it back this way, one eighth of an inch. If I'm here, what do I got to do? I got to count four, 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, right here. I'll do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, right here. It's going to be really hard for you to see on this in the video on that blue tape. Trust but verify. I'm going to lay on one side of that mark. One side of this mark. You can't see it by much. But we are towed towards the turn fin. Trust but verify. Coming all the way back here. Four and 23, 30 seconds. Almost 24. Four and almost, uh, let's see, 28 30 seconds. So that's four 30 seconds over, which is one eighth of an inch. We have predisposed our strut ever so slightly towards the turn fin. And now that we're here, we draw our line. 
soon as you guys tell me what I did with, there we go. Okay, same thing on the other side. That's our strut. You can, if you don't want to mess with this type of insanity, set it dead straight and your boat will track just fine. It'll turn just fine. Whatever you do, don't err in the opposite direction. Okay. If nothing else, I do this just to kind of cover my tracks with any mistakes I might make. I want to be sure that I am at least driving the rear of this boat into the turn. I've seen full-size hydroplanes where this is dramatic. You walk to the back of the boat and you think, oh my goodness, that's not gonna work. And you watch the boat go and it is unbelievable how the boat will turn. I'm gonna throw this on here just to mark my upper end. And we're there. How are you gonna cut that? You're gonna get a drill and drill it a million times and nah, that's a pain. We're going to use our wheel. If you have an old worn out one of these type cutters, as long as it's narrower, can you see that? Narrower than the strut, I can sink this baby down in there. In fact, we're going to hit the hub so I, may, I can really only go in that far and you'll be able to see that I'm well short of the full size, right? That's all the more I can cut. So we'll do that. Oh yeah, this is always scary. <laughs> Go for it. It's just wood. If we blow it, and I'm going to blow it, we fill it, we put it back, whatever. No big deal. You got this. Try to get it straight down in, by the way. You know, none of this number here. Yeah, I'm a little bit to the side of my pencil line. Better to sneak up on it than cut too much. A little trickier on this side. I could switch this way. It just feels so unnatural, but let, let's try it. Yeah, I chickened out. Okay, now what? <laughs> we can cut that middle part out. I'm just gonna angle it a little bit. Let's make a quick switch. See how well this works. These don't usually work all that great on wood. Now we're stuck. Thank you. I got us pretty close. Okay. We're going to flip real quick and take a look and see how bad I screwed up that transom and to make sure that we're back as far as we can be. <sighs> look at that. How far back can I? Hmm. Bearing in mind that we have a fillet here that this square corner wants to ride up on. So we may actually um, use a file or your uh, your thing goes around and around. It's a big belt belt sander to uh, cut an angle on here so that it's not biting into that fillet. So this is sitting down flat on the floor. Okay, if you need to, if you're back that far, I might try to avoid that fillet to where I'm standing forward just slightly of that transom there. Let's go to work. You have to be careful when you're filing though, because it's got teeth on, on every side. So if you're kind of pushing to one side or the other, you can really be knocking the slot out where you don't want it. <sighs> okay, so you think we should get this real nice and snug where we can shove it through and we're done? No, <laughs> we're gonna seal it, you'll recall. Then we're going to clear coat it 
that'll take up a lot of space. This will actually have to wind up in such a way that it kind of just drops through there fairly easily. And then after the painting and all of that, we'll touch up any spots that are causing it to bind and to make it go through. So I'm being a little bit overly anal here, but again, it, it it's if nothing else, it's to help avoid making a major mistake. If you sneak up on it, you won't have to use so much filling and fixing and hiding of errors. Not that I know anything about that. Ta-da! How'd we do? Still have our marks here, right? Can you see it? This is gonna get hot, isn't it? Woo! Yes, the answer is yes. I know they're not equal height or anything yet we're just getting them in the ballpark for for working with them and figure out where our, our mounting hole is gonna be ow man that's still hot it's a pretty useful glove right there Let's go ahead and do it. Same thickness. Something to drill into. Hopefully it won't explode the wood too bad. Okay, I've leveled these and the strut sticking through just slightly, right? Figured out what size screws we're going to use. So this is the right size hole here. I just match in the hole that we have here. It's a numbered drill. I don't, I don't remember what number it is. Number six? No, number 16. 16. You hear that or 91. <laughs> How high up do I need to be? Quite a ways up, so we're going to grab out near the end. I'm going to push down towards this and drill and hope for the best. And I'll show you why it doesn't matter here in a minute, even if it breaks out slightly. I felt it go through a number of things. I don't care if we drill into the jig, right? I 
I do care if I drill into my fingers, so I'm not gonna go all the way through. No, oh, it scooted there. I, d I did go through into the jig there. Don't care, that's the beauty of having that uh, strut in there stuck into the slot. You can't go wrong, it really can't miss. Let's not set that there, I'll knock it over and bend that drill bit. I went to drill something the other day and the bit was like this, it was bent. I think my wife snuck out here and borrowed my stuff, but who knows. Let's see how this turned out. Did I mention you should put tape on the back side? There's a reason for that, because I was marking its location. Uh, I believe I videoed that, so we'll have that for you. Look how nice and clean that looks. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, y'all want to see something super cool and yet super sketchy all at the same time. Okay, so we're going to use 440 screw, not 440, uh, 832 screws to mount our strut right but we want to sink them in okay we want to cut tapers on here now you can get hang on you've all seen these you've probably used this sort of thing this one's big just so that you can see it well and you can cut this with that you can try to and what it'll probably do is blow the wood all up and that's no bueno right here's a new trick it's probably a really old trick might be a new one for you. Stainless screw, 832, same size. I've already used this one a little bit. Can you see? I don't know where that is because I'm not looking at it. I've cut it, turned it into a, a cutter. But it's a very mild cutter because it's not officially a cutter. Here's how we do it. Here's the sketchy part. You grab one of these Dremel wheels, these super thin, super scary, on the package, it says heavy-duty cutoff wheel. They lie, of course, they lie. We're going to put it on here. And here's an important step. Okay. Remember when I told you it was really sketchy? Wasn't kidding. We're gonna cut this at an angle and we're just gonna chop it in a bunch of places. Trying to hit some of the areas I haven't cut before, but Maybe I'll go right back into them. You know what? That's getting really hot. Really hot. Okay, weird, huh? Ow! I mean... Really, 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 really hot. Okay, here we go. Ready? If it doesn't cut good one way, try the other way. Maybe switch back and forth. Remember when I said that's really hot? It's a lot hotter now. Wobbling around a little bit here, just to help it dig. Look at that, almost flush. Mmm. You know what? We're going to seal it. We're going to paint. Well, we're not going to paint it, but we are going to shoot it with clear. So it's going to stand up a little bit. So I'm going to sink it in just slightly. This one cuts really good in reverse. Okay. Hot, 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 hot. Look at that. Beautiful. 
aluminum 440 screws. Boom, shaka laka. Dig it.